Hello everybody and welcome back to my learning space. As you can see by the title of the video, today we are talking about South African jazz standard Nkilo Nkilo. Before we dive into this video, I want to explain to you what exactly is a standard, what exactly is a jazz standard. Now I'm going to have to make African American examples for this because quite frankly, the term jazz standard is an African American term. Now. When we're talking about standards or jazz standards, we're talking about songs that are taken from musicals that were showing on Broadway back in the day or movies that were popular back in the day or most of the time movies uh, that were also turned into plays. So example of this would be jazz standard, My Favorite Things which comes from my favorite things the musical tied up with strings these are a few of my favorite things and another example could be days of wine and roses which is actually coming from a movie called days of wine and roses the days of wine by Blake Edward if I'm not mistaken from 1962 um, which was also adapted into a play and the music was written by Henry Mancini um, these songs became popular uh, they were sung by people like Frank Sinatra and other jazz singers of the time and they became popular and they made it to the jazz songbook which we now know as the real book another form of standard or jazz standard would be songs that were made famous and were composed by jazz musicians for instance Thelonious Monk John Coltrane, Bud Powell, or Charlie Parker. These songs like, um, popular songs like, um, can't think of one now. In Walked Bud, Blue Monk, In the Urge, which is by Joe Henderson, Speak No Evil, which is by Wayne Shorter. These songs are songs that have become popular because of jazz musicians and they were written by jazz musicians and therefore have also made it into the jazz songbook. So jazz standards and standard popular songs are songs that um, are popular within its time. A lot of the time you'll also find that some songs were not really written by Miles Davis, but Miles Davis would make the song popular and somehow we'll never even know who the muse, who is the actual composer of the song because we know this as a jazz standard that is always, that was recorded by John Coltrane, for instance. So it's important to remember that some of these songs aren't actually songs that were written by these jazz musicians, but were actually taken from movies and uh, Broadway musicals. Now, in a South African context, this would be referring to a song like Ya Kalingomo by Winston Mankunku. It is a song that is widely loved by uh, South African jazz musicians, as well as La Langa by Makei Tabache. And um, this one that we're doing today by Ellen Silinga. Nkilo Nkilo. So let's get straight to it. Let's talk about the chord progression of Nkilo Nkilo and how to play it as a solo jazz piano player first thing as a beginner you need to be able to play root seven third upper major scale like this and I do have a video on this so I'm not going to be going into much detail because I want to talk about what's actually happening in the song as opposed to teaching you chords so I'm gonna pin the video that I've done up here but basically root seventh third root seventh third root seventh and third is how we build a chord in jazz harmony in harmony in general when we building chords up to the seventh extension we need the seventh and the third we can add the fifth in there as well but the fifth is a neutral chord tone because it doesn't change the chord quality whereas the seventh and the third change the chord quality to minor or to major or to dominant now when you're able to do that you pretty much will be able to play the song the song Nkilo Nkilo is the A section anyway is one six two five three six two five one progression one six two five three six two five one and you might be thinking to me what is that one two three four five six this is the six degree right but we just play it down here because it's nice to keep your bass notes low and not really up here but you could totally do this then we have chord two, 
then we have code five then three six two five one okay so now the melody before we play there are things as a jazz piano player that you need to bear in mind you want to create good voice leading so when you voice a chord you want to voice the approaching chord for instance if you're on a chord the chord that you're approaching you want to move as little as possible so let's put this in action i have this is the melody and the first chord is chord one right here i've got root seven third as i just mentioned how we build this is a shell structure of a chord at its bare minimum then we have to go to chord six now for chord six we need the root third and seventh as well right that would be one two three there's the third but we're putting the third over here because is this gonna sound much too low over here and here's the seventh one two three four five six seven the seven the seven actually also happens to be in the melody um But for the interest of just filling up the space, I'm putting the seventh here as well. So I'm doubling the seventh, but you could totally also just leave it like this. Okay. So we have chord one. Again, you could move the third and put it over here, but we're not going to do that. I just prefer orderly. It sounds orally it sounds much better to play it like this because you also have to think about the distance of the intervals um, of these chord tones that you're playing now we go to chord two here we have third we have seventh again now the tricky thing about this i'm going to stop here and say again something that's really important as a jazz piano player, especially if you are a beginner, which this video is targeted toward, when you're voicing a melody, you have to keep the melody on top because you're voicing it. So as a piano player, you've got the melody and you've got the chords. Essentially what the chords are doing is they are harmonizing the melody. They don't really uh, exist separately, but rather they are harmonizing the melody. So you wanna keep the melody on top always. That's why I'm saying that this part is is a bit tricky because if we have I need my third and seventh, right? Here's the third and here's the seventh. But as I had mentioned earlier, it might be a bit muddy to play it over here because we want to sort of open up our voicings and you know the piano's got so much range. You don't want to be playing chords that are like you know scared if you know what i mean there's nothing wrong with playing it like this when it calls for it but again as per voice leading if i'm coming from here i don't want to jump here are my chord tones right the third and the seventh i don't want to jump to here now the closest third and seventh would be third and seventh for g7 would be here the f stays becomes the seventh of g7 and the c comes to b right but again, we want to keep the melody on top. Now, with jazz piano, it's not so much like classical where you always have to be playing melody and chord, melody, chord at, all the time, you know. You can use your own discretion. So there are times where sometimes it might be best to play the melody and then play the chord or play the melody and bass note and then fill the chord inside which I think will work in this instance because we have I don't know if you saw what I did there melody and root then G7 that's, that's the only way we can get around it or I guess you could also put the melody on top but then that sort of takes away from the melody because the melody is does an octave jump so we kind of want to keep that okay then it goes to chord three e minor seven here's the third of e minor one two three and 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Again, we want to open up our chords. So we're voicing it in a spacious way. The third also happens to be in the melody, but I'm filling up the chord here as well by placing it somewhere in between the root and the seventh. But we can also place it like this. But can you see here, there's such a big gap between this G and this G. If I were to play the root and seventh over here. So we want to keep the distance good. The only distance that um, is okay is between root, uh, bass note and chord. Because the bass note is functioning as something different. The bass note is supporting um, the chords. It's not, it's not really a... Um, chord tone per se so you could definitely even play the bass note over here okay so we have three and then it six so okay let me just play from the top this is what we have so far right three six okay and if you're interested to know what i'm doing in my left hand i'm just moving down the scale moving diatonically diatonic means within the key that i'm playing in so just to create some sort of a bass line and then here i'm approaching my chord two by a half step also approach you can always approach your bass note by a half step it helps you create a sort of walking bass line now the second part of the a section we're going to chord four we it's approaching this area that does but what Mr. Ellen Silinga did is that he put a 2-5 before the, the chord 4. There's a rule in harmony that says, not a rule, but I guess you could say it's a rule that says that any chord can be preceded by its 5. So if I have an F chord, the five will be C7. That will be a dominant chord. You know, it kind of creates a tension. A cadential point is what it's called. And then it resolves down to the one. It's like a... <sighs> so any chord can be... If you want to create good voice leading and pull toward a chord that you are approaching, you always put its five there. Now, if you want more details about dominant chords here's another video for you to check out which will be very useful for you to know what dominant chords are but in the song we have the two then the five one so we have c c7 to the four chord right we have four three but it does C7 here because C7 was the 5 of F major, which is the chord 4 in C major. I know it sounds like a lot, but just bear with me. Then it goes to flat 7. This B flat 7. We call it flat 7 because it's literally a flattened 7th. Um, literally, I have, here's the 7th of C, which is B, and then you flatten that. Whenever you flatten something, you go down by a half step. Whenever you sharpen something, you raise it by a half step. So this will be a flattened seventh, which will make it B flat seven. Which really, this is a, a minor four resolution. I know that sounds like a lot, but check out some of the videos that I have. You'll see that these things are not as... Um, challenging as you think they are it's pretty straightforward but it's a matter of getting used to these things and the more you um, analyze harmony and play it on your instrument the easier it will become for you to understand these things so 
we're going from right chord one I'm voicing this like this because of, with the interest again of placing the melody on top I'm voicing the D minor like this this time because we have because the melody is on top so I'm putting the seventh there and the third there you can also add the fifth the fifth is irrelevant you can put it there or not it doesn't change anything so the seventh and third the melody happens to be the third now I don't want to keep make this video too long but let's go into the B section I'm gonna try to be as quick as possible uh, again whatever chord you're voicing apply the same method root 7th, 3rd and melody right so it's literally a 251 251 and then it goes back to if you're wondering what I'm doing here here I'm just holding a pedal note so I'm still playing the same chord you can play the same a G pedaled note so guys that is the bare basic of the chord structures and the chord progression and the form of Nkilo Nkilo which is actually a AABA form which is a standard jazz form or most songs use AABA or some sort of ABA form um, that is the standard shell of what the song is Next time I want to do a video of chord substitutions that you can use over the songs that will make it interesting that musicians have used over the years to um, play the song. So I hope you found this video useful. Please leave me a like and please leave me a comment so I can know you were there. Um, leave me also a video request of things that you would like to see um, and subscribe. Um, I'll see you again in the next video. Bye.